In this video, I'm going to be walking through an example implementation of a card game from scratch and talking through all of the logic that I need to implement in JavaScript, talking about all the JavaScript syntax I'm going to need, and then actually creating the program. The first thing I need to do is simply understand how the game works and what the rules are. So this is one page that describes all of these things, uh, and I just need to make sure that if I were to play this game in real life, that I would understand how to do it. I cloned a new copy of the starter code and I opened it in VS Code. So now before I write any JavaScript, I'm going to just write some notes in the script.js about how I think the game works. Uh, and then we're going to take those notes and try to transform them further and further towards actual JavaScript. So first let me just describe the rules of the game. So, um, the rules of the game. The objective is to win all the cards. Players take turns. Whoever has the highest card wins. I guess I should also include at the beginning the deck is shuffled and split evenly among the among the players. Turns drawing one card. Of course the highest card wins if the oops if the cards are equal, it's war. Um, if it's war, one card is drawn face down. One card is drawn face up. The highest face up card wins. The winner gets all the cards. And then this one is for war or not. Okay. I think those are all the rules. Now we can talk about how to translate this into JavaScript. So I can already look at these rules and have some intuition about what kind of JavaScript uh, structures that I might need uh, for some of these lines. So this might be a conditional. The objective is to win all the cards that test to see how many cards there are. The deck is shuffled and split evenly. Um, so I know I need something to do that to my deck of cards that's been shuffled. I already know my deck of cards is an array, so it's going to affect an array somehow. Um, drawing one card I know is uh, I can use the pop uh, function of an array. Um, whoever has the highest card. So I also know that I can use um, a conditional and a less than greater than uh, a boolean operator. Um, this is also another condition. Um, and then uh, I think it's too early for this for this other part here, and I can just implement some of the basic structures um, already, and then go from there. So I, I don't want to figure out everything about um, all of the rules that I have in my game. Um, I can already just start directly going into some JavaScript and um, implementing some code that runs first, so um, I have some code to begin implementing the more complicated part of my logic. So let's do that next. I copied my make deck function, my shuffle card function into my script.js, so now I'm going to create the deck 
uh, and then run it inside of the main function. I know that deck is going to be a global variable. So I want my deck to be shuffled, and uh, the thing that goes inside the shuff shuffle function is the deck. So I can just uh, call the make deck function right here. It's going to go into shuffled cards, and I'm going to get out the uh, shuffled deck and assign it here. So now uh, let's just make sure my code works, because now I've, I've copied and pasted a lot of code. I'm going to make sure it works by uh, dealing one card and then displaying it uh, inside the gray box. So I'm going to go all the way back up and then deal one card. And this is an object, so I need to format it here. So let's go to the browser and see if this works. I'm going to hit the refresh button. And when I hit the submit button, I expect to see a random card in the gray box. And if I hit the submit button again, then I should see a new random card because I'm dealing off of the deck uh, when I click the button. So Now I have a basic game that's running without errors. Uh, and I can continue on down uh, my set of notes to start implementing some more uh, features of the game. So before I write some more JavaScript, uh, I'm going to dig more further into um, exactly what I want in my game and how I want it to work. Um, when I'm thinking about the way that the game is going to be played and um, how I want it to work, I'm thinking about being able to simplify it. I'm thinking about how exactly these rules are going to fit into the, uh, the things that I can do inside the starter code. Um, I'm thinking about ways that I need to simplify it in order for it to just run. So um, this game doesn't talk about, uh, these notes don't talk about um, exactly who the players are. Uh, but for simplicity's sake, I'm going to make uh, one player be the computer, and then the other player be a player. Um, and so I need to be able to program in some computer behavior. Uh, and, and this is going to help me with this next thing, which is to split the deck between the players. Um, and so this will be the first step that I need to take in order to create the computer player. Um, it's simply to split the deck, so I'm going to do that next. Our deck of cards is represented by an array. Uh, so now let's talk about the specific JavaScript syntax that we need in order to uh, be able to split this array. I'm going to create just a plain array with numbers inside of it, because um, we're just talking about uh, the syntax with the array itself and not the objects. So the specific syntax I'm going to use is called the splice array uh, function. And then if I put my cursor here, it's going to tell me uh, what uh, data I need to put when I call this function. Uh, start refers to an index location inside the array where the splice starts. Uh, then I can give um, a number of items that I want to take out. So I'm going to say 3. And so that should give me uh, this, these three values. And this splice is also going to affect the cards array. So let's see now. So cards has these values left inside of it. And this variable has uh, is an array that has these three values inside of it. Now using splice, let's take this statement and turn it into some uh, JavaScript. So I'm going to copy this so we can see it. Uh, I know that I want to be able to do this when my game starts. So when the deck is shuffled is when I want to begin my game. So I know I need to do it right here. 
and here I'm going to create uh, the separate hands for each player. Okay. So using splice, I can say that I want to start at zero. And I already know actually that I want to take 26 things, right? I want to take half the deck. There's only two players. I'm splitting the cards evenly. So I don't need to do any more calculations than that. I also know that when I'm done, that deck is half the size. So it's already been split. I don't think I need to do anything else. I can just simply assign this variable uh, to this variable. Um, and I'm not making a copy of this computer hand uh, variable anymore, but um, I'm not going to be dealing with deck in any of the other parts of my program, um, so I think this is okay. Now I can move on to the next part of my game, uh, which is this one. Players take turns drawing one card. Uh, so now let's deal with that. Uh, this is the more dynamic part of the game. The game has started after the deck is shuffled and it's been split into two, one uh, half for each player. Um, so now I think that this instruction, what it means is that every time the submit button is clicked, uh, then this part of the game runs. Uh, so that means I'm going to put it inside the main function. So I'm going to replace uh, this deck.pop with something else. So uh, the instruction says that players take turn draw takes turns drawing one card. And so that means I'm, I only want one card and the place where I'm going to draw it from is not the deck anymore. Uh, it's the hand that I split in the instruction below. So I still want to just take one card out and so that means pop. So I'm going to get rid of this one. And then uh, just to make sure that this works, I'm going to output it here. Let's try this in the browser. So now when I click the submit button, I actually should see the exact same behavior with no errors. The next part of the instruction here is that the players take turns drawing one card. So um, I need the computer to draw a card. And then I can look ahead and see that this, there's this other thing, whoever has the highest card win, wins. Um, so I know that I'm going to write a conditional for this as well. So this is basically also just high card. I'm just going to compare the two cards that I've drawn. Now when I click the submit button, I should see the same behavior in the gray box, but I should see one of the other console logs I wrote appear in the console. So let's see. 